In this episode, I'm going to show you two systems, um, there are two boards that are used to cut uh, mirror, again a basic simple mirror cutting lesson. Uh, I'm going to cut strips just like this, some little bigger strips that could be longer, and I'm just, just going to discuss the boards, one's hanging up here and one's right here in front of me. Uh, they're used. This is a short video, but still informative. And um, again, they can be any size mirrors you want. Um, <clears throat> and hopefully, I'll do more of these, more mirror cutting systems, procedures, steps uh, in the future. Uh, so stay tuned and enjoy. Welcome back to another episode of the Kaleidoscope Maker and this time again I'm going to show you how to cut mirror. Um, I don't think I'll ever get done showing you many methods, techniques and tools to cut mirror uh, but I'm going to show you a couple this time and uh, hopefully I can help you with some ideas, thoughts on how you want to cut your mirror. Um, in the past I've shown you how to cut mirror with a square even though that's actually a triangle, it's a square. And I've shown you how to make <coughs> your own square in a previous video. I know it wasn't that interesting, but still, you now know how to make your own. If you don't have the resources, don't want to spend the money on it, uh, make it out of wood or metal or, in this case, acrylic. Um, and I've shown you how to make tools to cut the right length of mirrors and when but again mirror cutting <coughs> and now I'm going to get into a very fun subject that's cutting boards and this is a cutting board that you buy for stained glass and this is one of the first ones that I had um, that I bought I made a number of them myself um, and um, this is from Great Beginnings, uh, the Emerald Rainbow, Clearwater, Florida. I can give you the information. I bought this actually from a stained glass shop. Uh, it says patent pending. I bet you have a patent for it now. Um, <clears throat> anyhow, I'll show you how to cut cut mirror using this, and I'll also show you when I can find it the Morton system and we're just going to cut some mirror and I don't know if I'll turn it into a kaleidoscope design or not but cut mirror so here we go again this is a great beginnings board and it's adjustable to any angle you want and I kind of actually I kind of like this except the problem is if you're trying to lay the sheet down you actually have to slide it underneath uh, but this lets you adjust to an angle but my complaint is, is that it doesn't have the angle on it and you can <clears throat> if you have the center point here which this one doesn't I actually have to bring it up or cut it or modify it to where this is right here along this edge <clears throat> but another way to do it is actually have this along the back edge or make something like it to where it can actually show you the angle which I could show you how to modify this later maybe I'll come up with a one that they might be able to use in order to do it <coughs> also you can put a piece of uh, tape down here so that you can measure your distance um, I don't have one but <coughs> you can put one down there again the concepts of cutting boards are all the same yet each one's unique and special and I'm hoping that um, Don Doak or the Doak family uh, if you're out there and you're listening if you give me permission to uh, show and display your cutting board I'll be glad to do it here on the on the uh, YouTube channel uh, Don Doak and I'll give you links to where you can get that information has a wonderful cutting board it's not the only one it's not the cutting board. Everybody has their own unique designs and styles and methods of cutting. 
I have a few cutting boards that I'll probably show you how to make later uh, but right now I'm just showing you a few but anyhow this one you can set up your angle for your cuts uh, most times we're just trying to do our general rectangular one <clears throat> in that case I can confirm that this is 90 degrees once it's held up against the stop I can lock it down again this bar is kind of a nice feature looks pretty good if you have a uh, machinist square or a carpenter square you can put up here and check it <coughs> and um, that will uh, help you make your uh, cuts and now what I want to do is I just basically want to cut some mirror and in this particular case I'm actually going to start with a little piece I have or do I want to do that yep and um, I want to cut this one in half because I want to show you how to make a, a special Halloween um, mirror design here in another episode and this is about two and a quarter it's a sixteenth over two and a quarter and there's actually a jig gizmo that can help you center things again something else in the future I may show you but a good idea is to take it on either side of the um, find a center point in here and make sure that it balances on either side of that center point this says about three and an eighth and this says three and an eighth plus a sixteenth so if I slide it over here And I thought I left a flat head. <clears throat> Mark it right on the center of that. Okay. So now, what you got to take in consideration when you're cutting is the width of your cutting piece. And I'll bring it up there so you can see it. See? This has a certain width to it. This will be up against the bar and this is where your cutter is that little wheel right there that's where you want to be right on the mark is with the wheel so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it right up here to where that wheel is right on the mark this again is not a great one because usually I like to have the mirror out here where I can hold it further but I can push it right up against here hopefully you can see this let me zoom in There we go. Hold it right up against that. Hopefully square. Didn't sound like it cut, but I think it did. And it did. Okay. <clears throat> I didn't get it perfect. I had it a little bit off, as you see. That's all right. I'm not worried about it. <clears throat> now, um, most cases, this will be just fine. But th sometimes this is what happens you end up where it flares off towards one end see if I can show that to you in such a way that you can uh, you can see it see right here it, it kind of flares up and um, for some artists that's okay see it kind of curves out here and here it kind of curves in and you can actually see where it there's a little tiny I can get it to focus you see where there's a little tiny little gap right there that happens and there's actually one here at the top too where it flared off too and for some artists that's alright for some artists it's not uh, you just want to make sure that the piece that's not flaring is up against the other piece but the way that they typically solve that <coughs> is what they'll do is they'll come in here and they'll cut the extra end off and break it and cut this end as well and then what you've done is you've gotten rid of the flare these should be pretty well straight parallel to each other next step and I took my razor knife away shame on me <clears throat> is to now cut 
the little and Don Doak also mentions a wonderful little thing using a lady's razor blade <coughs> as your cutting device and you can use razors you can use whatever you want to oops I'm just using this because it's handy. You can use a um, Zacto knife. Okay, so now we have our two mirrors. All right, and again, I didn't cut them exactly the same size. I could have done better. I always can do better. Uh, you can also create stops that go along here, and uh, Morton System has the stops. You can make stops for this board. It's not hard, um, but there's one of them. This is, uh, again, a cutting board, and I'll be right back showing you the Morton System. Um, this is the Morton System. It's a uh, uh, much more ad advanced. Not saying it's better, because <clears throat> everybody needs to kind of have a system that works best for them. Uh, some people even create just a dedicated board for cutting stain, cutting mirror, and do their stained glass cutting elsewhere. This is really a stained glass cutting sheet. Um, <clears throat> And they have little little spots for you to set up everything. You can place this any place you want to along here. Let's see, I'm going to line it up over here since I have my uh, straight HP. As a matter of fact, I'll bring it a little closer in here so you can see it right there. And this bar right here lines up. You can, as a matter of fact, you can even do neat things like this. Mark it. And then here, mark it so that you can line up your uh, <clears throat> your piece. And then the other thing is, is this is the straight edge from the Morton. See, it says Morton Glass Works right on it. I'm not being paid by them. I'm not in any way telling you you have to go out and buy this one nor the other one. I'm just letting you know where they are, what they are, where to get them. So if you want them, you can get them. And this has a aluminum channel which will slide in at this end and then it will stick on that or in this particular case it's got this one for the straight edge because then while it does it's got a ruler on here okay and it'll have the zero mark right here mine's been kind of abused I've used it for 14 15 years yeah, something like that, 14 or 15 years, <clears throat> 13 years, give or take. Um, but anyhow, right there's a zero mark, and then it has this one, two, three, four, five, six, which I like. I like the ruler on here. So it's got the zero mark on here, and what you can do is you can line up that zero mark, or line up the center. Right there. Center of this. So that this bar fits right in there, sits on that pin. And again, Don Doak recommends you find out because see, there's a little bit of play in here. You can tighten that up by shoving some tape in there or a wedge or something so that it holds on the correct side. But for some people, that little play right there, hear it, is enough to set things off. And same thing down here, there's a little bit of play that can be fixed. <coughs> now, now it's set on the zero mark. If you want to do angles, all you do is take it and place it on this pivot. Then your ruler is no longer available, which there's some options in that. Then you can place this thing wherever you want to and cut whatever angle you've got set. And again, this is a fine adjustment over here. 
so you can do a fine adjustment. I'm not going to go into all the details about this, but right now I'm just going to try to cut some mirror for you. <coughs> all right, and they also have stops which you can place in here, and these can be used as stops as well. So <coughs> I'm going to use again a piece of scrap glass, and I'm going to just even up the edges. Uh, I can place a stop here, but I'll show you that in a bit. And I'm going to cut. Now, some people complain that this this ribbing, this this edging on here, uh, these little pockets create little ripples, which they can. Uh, one solution is, is to place a piece of glass or a piece of mirror thin glass underneath and that flattens up this surface and then you can cut without having it create any uh, ripples and there you go <clears throat> so that's one way, way to get rid of the ripples. Uh, some people don't notice the ripples, some people do. I guess it depends upon your experience or whatever. <coughs> um, and I'm just going to pick up my... There you go. Alright. <coughs> So that's cutting that side, and let's check and see how square it is. That feels pretty square, looks pretty good. Um, <clears throat> I'll cut up the other side just to show you, and this time I'll just use the uh, board itself without Doing it. And notice I use the same side down here. That way I know that this side and this side are parallel to each other. I don't know if this is square or not. And we can go into all the details about cutting square or not cutting square. But <clears throat> if you go off the same reference side, which you could even mark your reference side, it helps out because you don't know if these edges, these two are parallel to the other or if these two are perpendicular to this. But once you cut them and you know this is perpendicular, that should be perpendicular then you only have to worry about the far side. That didn't sound right. There it was. And you learn it from sound. So there we go. <clears throat> and again, there's probably a little flare here. Yeah, I don't think there's any flare here. But I do feel some little ridges. Uh, again, if those bother you and you don't have the extra glass to back it up with, you can put a piece of uh, emery paper or the black sanding paper on a piece of glass and, and sand that off. <clears throat> Which, again, Don Doak has a nice presentation on beveling edges and other stuff like that. Again, I I do recommend you check out his videos. They're very informative and very helpful, but they are not the only ones. <clears throat> I don't think there is a gospel or Bible or rule book that you really have to follow when you're doing stained glass cutting or kaleidoscope making. Um, sometimes you don't want to follow the rules. and you may learn that later in some of these videos. But anyhow, next thing for me to do is probably go ahead and cut this. <clears throat> and then I can determine how much I want to cut, where I want to cut it at. Let's see here. This is about four and a quarter. I think I'm going to cut two inches and two inches. Just so I have a little left. So I can set that right at the two inch mark. And here's where this comes in handy. I can place this thing right up here and the other ones, this one's designed actually to hold this bar but 
they have another one that you can use. So that gives me two inches. And I can hold that right there and score it, break it, cut it. Again, I'm using the same reference side, it just makes it easier. And typically, if you can do that, that's that's pretty doggone good. But it wasn't perfect. I see there's a little flaw to it. <clears throat> so now I have the mirror. And again, as you see here, I have a little lip there, which I can again cut those off, but I'm not going to worry about them at this time. And these are right on. <clears throat> now, some people do ask the question, um, can you cut on the other side? And I do know that some kaleidoscope artists do cut on the face side. And that's because when you cut and you break, sometimes it creates a, a little little lip flare um, on the back side. Uh, sometimes it creates on the front side. Uh, as you learn to experience glass, you'll find out all the little wonderful oops I got you's that it gives you. <clears throat> uh, some people actually work with thicker mirror um, which hopefully I'll get a discussion about the various kinds of mirror. Uh, there's so much in this kaleidoscope world for me to cover and I'm hoping to be able to cover as much as possible. But anyhow, here is the mirrors and I hopefully showed you two systems to cut with and uh, I hope you enjoy this video. Uh, I will do more. Please ask questions. Please um, <clears throat> contact me. Uh, let me know what you're wanting to learn, what you're wanting to find out. And there's another lesson on mirror cutting. And one was using a, uh, I forget the company name, I'll have it posted. And the other one is Morton Glass System and hopefully I'll cover some more mirror cutting systems here in the future but there you go there's another wonderful video and please come back and please be aware of and kind to people who have hidden disabilities